That is big. Big ass TV, isn't it? <laughs> I've got to open mine. How you doing, man? Good. Francis, we've got uh, a lot to do. We've got a lot of stuff to take out. I'm going to film a video Ooh. in the new studio. First one. Remove. Don't remove. <laughs> Some of my spicy sauce. Yeah. The last time you ate spicy food, you got a wet nose like a dog because it was so hot. Well, that's what happens when you eat spicy food. This is the best sauce, though. Cheeky little plug. Nando's, please sponsor us. Is this too moody? That's a fucking cool shot, man. It's like we're going to start telling ghost stories or something. Lawrence doesn't like having the big lights on because he's he's like sleepy most of the time, isn't he? It looks badass, bro. We've now been back from Australia for just over two weeks. We've had some time to recover and I thought it would be a good idea to do a comprehensive review of all the equipment that I used when I was out there. Now I've packed up my bike exactly how it was in Australia. So let's have a look at some of the gear. Perhaps these were the most mentioned item in the whole of the Australia trip. I'm talking about them again. These are black diamond ski straps. They basically allow you to attach anything to anything. Much, much better than using bungee cords. They're indestructible. We were using these in conjunction with the tail fin rack, the single most useful bit of kit. Uh, that we had. Basically a carbon pannier rack with a set of a pannier on it. It's got a laptop case that was custom done by them and an aero trunk style seat pack. The laptop case worked great. Uh, it's not waterproof, but apparently they do a fuel waterproof one, right? Got exactly the same mounting system as the panniers have that you can buy with the tail fin. So it didn't wobble around at all. And it's much more aero than a pannier would be. They're gonna be sorting out James and Lawrence with laptop sleeves like this for Vietnam. I'm employing the, the Sainsbury's bag technique, which always works well. They don't automatically get a front row start position. That Round of the so super prestige cyclocross event. Right. But it's raining in Belgium, so. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's what you're all about now, mate. The cyclocross. And the last five videos you've uploaded has just been cross. It's a great sport, you know. Um, probably won't be racing it again this year because I don't have a bike. But maybe next year. Van der Paal's back from his crash earlier this season, so. See how he goes versus Tom Peacock. My money's on Tom, mate. Yeah? Yeah. Bold. Tom's just had a bit of a crash, but he's fought his way back into um, a podium place. So hopefully he can uh, he can hold that. They change bikes every lap because it's so muddy. So hey, what, every every lap. Well, pretty much every lap, yeah. But they remount them so quickly, you hardly notice. They hardly lose any time, like maybe a second. You know Tom's teammate Cameron. He's got a YouTube channel as well. He does. I'm, I want to do a collaboration with him. No. I want him to teach me how to do a awesome. bike change. Really? Do you think you could do that? No. Do you remember, do you remember two months ago when you like tried to teach me how to do cyclocross? Yeah. Um, I, I think Cam will probably be better at like teaching us. Too late now. I've already done the race. Oh, now this aero pack has been used for a month. Uh, you can see some signs of use. I mean, it was quite an intense situation we were in. Lost one of the sticky bits on the side, but easily replaceable. Gets a bit dirty underneath because of the road spray. You'd experience the same sort of wear with a seat pack. Now I was using Continental tires. Uh, these are the new Terra Speeds over the 20 days of riding. And it was safe to say after 15 days when we hit Adelaide, they needed to be changed. Now that's no fault of the tire manufacturer. Chris had to change his tires as well. It was just a sheer amount of distance. By that point we were at 3,400 Ks. So there's not much you can do. The rear one was definitely worse off. So if you were doing a similar sort of trip and you didn't want to stop and change your tires at a bike shop, take a spare. We were both running tubeless and we both noticed that loads of punches were sealing. So if we'd have been running tubes, I think we would have been stopped by the side of the road quite a bit. Now the tail fin has about a 20 litre capacity so you can fit the majority of normal bike packing gear inside there because we were carrying the camera equipment and made things a little bit more tricky. But to organize my things inside the bag, I was using colored drawstring bags. Thoroughly recommend doing this. And if for any reason you need to carry more stuff, you've got a backpack as well. I'd never travel anywhere without this. Some of you might recognize this guy as well. I've got to keep it now forever. Thanks Chris and Ian. At the bottom of the tail fin, I was also carrying a few Ziploc bags and waterproof bags just from a shop. Again, if you want the security of keeping everything 100% waterproof, you can use bags like this and they, they squash down. Do you want one? I'm not vegan. <laughs> this is the jacket I was using, uh, made by Rab. It was too big, way too big. It packs down inside its own pocket. It doesn't say what model this is. I do thoroughly recommend taking a down jacket with you if you're bike packing. Even if you're going somewhere hot, you never know what's gonna happen. This size was just annoying. Chris had with him a Patagonia Micro Puff or Nano Puff. It's more of a hoodie than a coat and it packed down to like nothing. Really good, I've got one of those on order myself. I have a love-hate relationship with this camera. The GoPro Hero 7. Image quality is amazing. Sound isn't great, but usable. I don't know if it's this exact one. It just likes to turn itself on and off all the time. Sometimes I've got an hour's worth of footage of like a fence outside a cafe. The inner gloves from Descent 133. These were the perfect happy medium 
uh, from all the gloves that I had in my drawer. They were fine down to like five degrees and uh, they squashed down pretty small as well. So they were in my frame bag. Now I didn't use this that much, but when I lost the plug adapter, it was a lifesaver. You got the same one? This is one of the best things I've ever bought. Six phone chargers in it? More. I'd More? Say. On a normal phone or maybe six on a plus or something. Yeah. Power bank from Anchor. Now for some stuff on the boat. Food pouch from Apadura, so, so useful. When you've done like 200Ks, three days in a row, you're tired. Your arms are tired. You don't want to be going in your pockets for food. This thing is amazing. You can either put bars and wrap food in there, or you could just empty stuff and you can make your own sort of trail mix out of peanuts and sweets and jelly snakes. You can also do it up. Uh, Chris, when we were riding the really hot days, he put a whole like liter and a half Coca-Cola in there. So it's actually pretty wide and it does affect your bike's handling slightly. Uh, your turning circles reduced, but I mean, it was only a straight line in Australia anyway, so it was all right. On the other side, I've wedged in this emergency BV bag. Didn't have to use it, so I don't know how good it is, but it kind of fits there. You got an emergency BV for Vietnam? No. You gonna get one? Probably not. I've just been influenced. <laughs> the Backcountry Food Pouch Plus. Info crank. Flawless as usual, as was the Shimano group set. Although I am looking forward to riding some gravel on the new GRX with the clutch because you still get the chain slap and stuff. This Cell Italia saddle, Boost X3. I did start to get really uncomfortable on it, but everyone's different. You might find one of these really comfortable. Wait, wait, look. Can you fit a Mavic Air in a Apertura bag? If it just breathed in a little bit, it would go in. It's kind of nice to have that security, but it is so much bigger than the drone itself, isn't it? For everyone, this is a Mavic Air that I used when I was out there. So all the drone footage was uh, from this. You don't want to mix your sweets and your drones together, do you? Mavic Air, previously the uh, ultimate bike packing drone. Now they've released a new one, which is like 200 grams. It's 249 grams. We're going to have to get one. It's half the weight. It is again, half. It's which mad. Is so it's half the size. I had with me a tub of tubulitos, but in the end, because of the tubeless working, uh, didn't have to use any. Better safe than sorry though. You know you've had a tough trip when you've basically delaminated your bar tape. You should uh, see my hands, man. Two weeks on and they're still... Ah, oh, for real. You need to moisturize, bro. Fit block bottles, few signs of use, but very good. Skin grows back, lunch box, tiny bit of damage. This is the problem with having a tiny frame. When the knobbly tires were on, it was super, super close. And when I was hitting some potholes, it was catching. In the end, it turns out tightening these up more, um, kind of hoisted the bag up and I didn't have as much of a problem after that. I could do a small repair job on that and it didn't go through the whole way though. So another really well-made product. And that leads me to my biggest problem with my bike packing setup. A combination of bar bag and water bottles on the forks just created a wall. I made a fairly big effort to try and get everything on my bike in line because I was fed up of riding panniers when we did the America trip all that time ago. Wind tunnel testing shows it could be about 20 watts slower running panniers. I reckon this wasn't far off. So I'm gonna try and work on a solution, maybe smaller bottles on the front of the forks. Obviously water won't be quite as much of a problem in Vietnam as it was in Australia because the rides are shorter, but this is something to consider. Now that situation got me thinking a bit about how much aerodynamics come into play with something like bike packing. I don't think it's something that should be ignored. So I sent a quick message to Xavier from AeroCoach and Xavier was actually already planning on doing some testing. Hopefully I'm gonna catch up with those guys, go to a wind tunnel with my bike packing set up and actually work this out with science. I'll try and take a set of panniers with me as well that I can fit onto the sides of the tail fin along with a few different combinations of bags and see what we discover. Hey, it is hot under this light. I'm melting. I mean, it does look a little bit silly, doesn't it? Where, don't, whatever you do, don't get that. It'll be 20 watts. 20 watts. I reckon, it would, I, I reckon, this is my guess, 20 watts. Unless I go with no frame bag, I can't fit my water bottles, especially not a water bottle that's a decent size. Skin grows back also do a wedge, which kind of goes at the front. Might be and I can put one in this uh, mount here. I'm gonna try and figure out a solution before Vietnam. But maybe it will be just putting these bottles on the back of the rack and hopefully be a bit quicker. It's hot. Oh, it was a good, very successful day. How long until that studio is fully set up? Uh, it's going to go forever and ever, I think. We're more than halfway, though. Yeah. It's almost there. Yeah. Almost. You just need to shave the door. The door needs shave a bit of a, the door. a trim. So I've just come home. There's a great blog in cyclingabout.com where a guy has compared the drag of front panniers, rear panniers, and a normal bike packing setup when it's all in line. Now he didn't do this in a wind tunnel, but he did it in an outdoor velodrome. So on a 100K ride, uh, both front panniers and rear panniers were 12 minutes slower. If I remember to put a link down to this study down below. It made me pretty excited to do something in the wind tunnel. Might seem a bit of a strange idea thinking about aerodynamics for bike packing, but when you're doing such a huge distance, especially into a headwind like that Australia trip, it can potentially save you hours. Of course, there are downsides to having your bags all in a line as well. Panniers, 
a million times easier to pack. You can also fit more stuff in, but sometimes you just want to have an easier ride. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the first video from the new studio. It's a little bit of work to be done. We all know how to get a bike on the wall and that sort of thing. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. I'm going to get this rideable.